you know? All right, Shalom, Shalom. All right, giving all praises, all glory, and all honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakurash. All right, double honor to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone who rule well. All right, worthy to be accounted double honors. And peace is how you touch. So, are you walking about there preaching this truth throughout the four corners of the earth with truth and sincerity in your hearts? All right. <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is GMS Indiana, all right? You know, coming to you week in and week out, prophesying the downfall of America and, and, uh, and Bible prophecy. All right. Now, uh, one thing I want to get into is current events, man. All right. Current events happen as to where it's, uh, it's leading up to America's downfall. All right, can a brother get uh, uh, Psalms 2? Psalms 2, uh, Psalms 1? Because uh, the Bible gives certain certain things to happen before this the downfall of the superpower, which the superpower, the current superpower right now is America. And it has been for over the past 50 years, man. All right? Ever since they bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, all right, and, and, and the war's war, it's been a superpower. And this has been, and the Lord loves taking down superpowers, man. All right, you can, you can count for that during Babylon and during the days of Egypt, all right? Uh, during the days of Moses when he took down Egypt, okay? Rome. 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 Yep. All right, he took down Rome and had, it had us rule, but even though we was going off of being wicked, we were still ruling. You know? And the Lord took us there and raised up this Edomite to be in our steed, you know? And, but the Lord is going to take him down the meat that we. The Israelites may rule forevermore. God, this is Psalms 2 and 1. He says, why do the heathen rage? Why do they rage? Why do they talk about all this? Why do they talk about all this tomo, all right, and all this flavorous words talking about, oh, uh, uh, we're going to rule next, all right? And they, when they have these secret councils, all right, when Esau had these secret councils, these other the countries, Moabites, all right? Uh, Ammonites, Ishmaelites, all right, when they have these secret councils, they think that they're going to rule next, all right, the North Koreans, right, you know, and if John Wu think he's going to rule next, he's going to be the one that, uh, to rule next. So, I would say, yeah, basically, in layman's terms, for y'all that don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about uh, so-called Chinese people, yeah. or, or, or Russia, you know, or, um, or like you said, like the brother said, uh, the uh, Northern, Northern, North Korea, I'm glad you, said that, huh? you know, right. you know, because you know, uh, that's that's what what that scripture means. Why do the heathen rage, man? And it's gonna go into it a little bit more unless you got something else to say. No, uh, yeah, I, yeah, uh, I'm glad you said that actually, because uh, actually, I want to give understanding of that scripture in the water. Uh, yeah, he said, why do the heathen rage? I mean, everybody that's not a heathen, everybody that's a heathen is everybody besides an Israelite. Right. So if you're not of the uh, tribes of Negro, Latino, or Native American, if you're not of those, tri of those tribes, all right, then you're counted as a heathen. And when it says, why do the heathen rage, it means the leaders of these heathens, all right, the, uh, the princes, the ones that's ruling them. Why do they rage? Khan, he says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And the people imagine a vain thing. The vain thing that they're imagining all right, is they're going to rule next. Can I bring it up? I believe it's uh, Second Ezra when it talks about the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Srock uh, 12. It's Srock 11. It's Srock 9. I do. God. He said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And the reason why it's a vain thing is because it's uh, that what they're imagining, it's not going to come to fruition. You know, and what they're imagining is to be the next superpower. You know, they're not, they're not going to, uh, it's not going to be no uh, uh, superpower no more amongst these heathens, man. The, the next superpower is the kingdom of heaven, man. The kingdom of heaven is coming. 
That's why the Lord got us out here in the highways and the byways prophesying and telling you and warning you of these things that's coming, man, so that you can come in and repent. This is the time right now to come in and repent to the Heavenly Father, man, so that you get salvation, man. It's a vain thing to them because the kingdom of heaven is going to come and rule forever and ever and ever. Okay? He said, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsels together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Lord shall have them in derision, man. So the Lord shall have them think of thought that's going to come to pass, but it's really not. He's going to have them in derision. We get my story. You get that the word derision? Cut. 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 The, uh, uh, the word derision in a in a uh, my in the Strong's is Strong's Strong's H three nine thirty two. It means to mock, deride, ridicule, to mock. The right having derision. It's a ridicule, man. All right, he's going to ridicule them. He's going to be made a mockery. He's going to be made a joke. He's going to have them in a joke, a trick bag. All right? You know, he's going to have these heathen thinking that they're going to rule next. But honestly, it's not going to be their turn. It's going to be the turn of the Israelites. I got that scripture. It says, uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 7. Pride is hateful before God and man. And by both, that one can be iniquity. It says, because of unrighteous dealings mm. and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's what's going to happen, man. Because of what? Because of injuries? Because of unrighteous dealings? Right, and that, those injuries is talking about murders. You know, all, this devil, the so-called white man, all he's done is murder, man. That's all he's done is murder. Murdered our people, man. So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And like, what, like, what did it say? And in unrighteous dealings, man. Yeah, unrighteous dealings, man. When they, all those treaties that they broke. Right, God. That's unrighteous, man. To make an agreement and break it, man. You swore on your, on your name, on your reputation, and you threatened your reputation, man. Hey, I heard a brother making this. I heard a brother doing a video. He said, "Man, you, you so-called white people are dirty, man. You are filthy." Here it is, giving the parable about how the Native Americans brought you into their land and you overthrew them. Here it is. I find you uh, wandering about the land, not knowing where you're going, and I take you into my house. All right, and you and you uh, injure me with biological warfare. All right, and overthrow me and take my house. That's 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 deceitful, man. That's deceitful. That's that's uh, it's unrighteous, and that's that is doing injury to your neighbor, uh, to someone who showed kindness unto you, man. That is a nasty personality to have on you, man. That is a very disgusting thing. That's detestable to do wrong to someone who did good unto you. All right, and it says that in the book of Genesis. It said, uh, "Let let a man reap what he sow." Come, so this is uh, the book of Psalms, fifty-five and twenty-one. He had to put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. God. He had a broken his covenant. He broke his covenant. That's the unrighteous deal. It's a perfect scripture. You want to argue, man? He broke his covenant, man. Read that again, Bible Kishon. God, this is Psalms 55 and 21. He had to put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He put hand, he put action into such that be at peace with him. Hey man, when Christopher Colombo came over here, man, he made, uh, he made, again, he made, uh, he made phone with the ones that was at peace with him. You know? Huh. He had a broken his covenant, meaning like those treaties the brother was going into. Yeah. You know? Covenant is an agreement. Right. He broke his agreements. And, and, and how did he do it? It's going to go into it more. He said the words of his mouth was smoother than butter. Smoother than butter. They were, were peaceable words. Things that you would like it to. All right? Soft, smooth words. Things that you would like. You know? Not what he actually had in his heart when he was thinking this in his, in his mind. Keep going. He says, but war was in his heart. 
And when you go into the word heart, it means love. War was in his mind, man. It says, in the scripture, it says war was in his heart. But the heart means the mind. So war was in his mind when his words were smoothly the butter. You know? The whole time, he was he was sitting up there ready to kill. You know? That's, that, that's how he baited you in. That's how the devil baited you in. He baited you in by being nice and kind to you. You know, to get to get what he want out of you. And, he, and, and that's still his attribute to this day. That's right. That's still his attribute. He gonna be nice, nice as possible, man, to make you make you trust him, man. Yes. But the whole time he set you up to fall, man. He set you up to fail. And we, we talk about the so-called white man, who was known as Esau Edom, man, in the Bible. He the devil that the Bible speak of, man. Right. And, and that word devil just means deceiver. That's what he do, man. He he trick you, man. He deceive you, man, and to believe in one thing, you know. But on the other hand, he on something else the whole time, man. Right. That's our uh, today. That's called an ulterior motive, man. Done. Uh, I, 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 I suspect that you have an ulterior motive behind these questions. Hey, that's the so-called white man, man. That's right. He may come to you, but he got an ulterior motive, man, to overthrow you. And hey, man, that's not that's not manly. That's not valid. That's not honor. Hey, man, that's detestable, man. That's that's fucking hateful. That's right. Excuse my French, but that's hateful to come to a man peaceably and give him what was in your heart, man. The whole damn time, man. Hey, but that's okay because the Lord's gonna pay for that, man. The Lord's gonna make you pay for that, man. Yeah, how about Shimmy our shots gonna make you pay for that? Man? Hey, hey, we talking about the so-called white man who's the devil, man, which means deceiver. That's how he gets you by his words, man. Being all nice and cunning. The scriptures say that he was a cunning hunter. That's right. You know what I'm saying? When you go into that word cunning. If you can pull that up, I'm going to finish reading it. Yeah, Genesis, I'm going to finish reading this. He says, but war was in his heart, and his words were softer than oil. So basically, he came to you all, all calm and, you know, nice. Hey, how you guys doing? You know, me and my wife was going to go down to the lake, you know. That's how he saw talk. Oh, you know, trying to be all nice and shit, man. But the whole damn time, he'll get you down to the, to the lake and drown your ass, man. You know? What did you do with Brother Abel? Yeah, God. He said, he says, we're smoother than oil, but yet were they drawn swords. But yet were they drawn swords, man. The whole time, man. He was like, yeah, y'all can come down here, man. We having a machine dig tonight, man. We're gonna be partying. There's gonna be food there. There's gonna be wine, drinks. You know? I remember this one time I was down at uh Shut up. What? That's my cousin. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here, girl. <laughs> hey, what's up, girl? But anyway, uh, uh, I remember this one time I was down in uh, I was down in uh, Oklahoma City. I was doing a job down there, and we, we was at this club called Inca Hoops. And it was it was me and it, it was uh, me and two other chains. We did, we went up in there, man. And, it was full of cowboys, man. We was like, damn. I think I, I was like, man, I think we came in the wrong place, bro. They was down there doing the uh, uh, the uh, square dance and shit, man. Yeah, and then they, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> we down there not knowing no better, man. We up there hitting on the little, the little chicks down up in there, man. They got a date to They was having a date to contest that night. And, uh, anyway, I, I think they was getting mad because the little chicks was digging us. It was this one dude from uh, New York I was with, his brother from uh, Baltimore. And, uh, they walked up to us, man. They was like, "Hey, man." It's like, uh, he but he boldly said it though. I had to give it to this people. Like, he said, "Man," he said, "I hate niggas." He said, "But you know what? Y'all some cool ass niggas." <laughs> he said, "For real, man. Y'all some cool ass niggas." He said, I'll, "That's why we we gonna invite y'all to this party we have. It's gonna be food there. It's gonna be uh, uh, weed. It's gonna be hoes. Y'all come on, man, and come enjoy y'all self." The other two Jakes that I was with, they was like, oh, it was a, it was another dude with us. He was an Italian dude. And uh, he was like, hey, he was like, they was like, uh, uh, shit, man, let's go. Let's go kick it. I said, hell no. I said, man, they going to fuck us up. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, hell no. We ain't going to that shit, man. They going to fuck us up, man. They just trying to bait us to go to that shit so they can fuck us up. Man. Yeah, God. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, one, the one dude, the Italian dude, he said, but I'm white. I said, you're a white nigga. <laughs> I, said, nigga, nigga. I said they gonna hang your ass hanging in the tree with us. <laughs> I said we gonna go back to the hotel room, man, and kick it, man. Fuck that. Are you a pale nigga, nigga? <laughs> man, look, 
Ask Esau, man. He he the devil, man. He'll trick you into anything, man. Okay, we still recording. This is uh Zod chapter 83. Yeah. I'm gonna start at the top. This gonna go with that Psalm chapter 2 you read, man. A song of or a song of Asap. Keep not thou silence, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For lo, thine enemies make it tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Hey, uh -huh. so they don't just hate yep. they don't just hate us. They uh they hate Yahweh while Yahweh was shot, man. That's why you have a shot. I always said it, man. He said, "Hey, uh, uh, they don't hate you, but they hate, they hate, uh, they hate me. You know, if, if the world hate you, they hated me, man. Hey, right. If the world hate you, I was shot. They hated you, how? So they hate us as a whole, like as hey, our power in us. Right, okay? right. And, and the reason why they hated our, our power because our power was always there for us, man. He was our defense. He was our cover. You know." against all the heathen nations. Right. You know, and it goes into the history, the, the scriptures go into the history of that, man. Yeah. That's why the scriptures say, uh, 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 Salakia, uh, it says, uh, uh, damn, it's at the tip of my, I hate when it happens, man. I just had it, Salakia, it'll come back. Go ahead, go it's ahead. It's uh, Psalms 83 and three. Yeah. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden. So yeah, man. What these Edomites do is they take crafty counsel. They get together and yeah, they yeah, devise yeah, a plan yeah. as to where they can try to destroy us, man. Yeah, that's nah. their whole purpose, man. Right. Their whole purpose is to destroy us so they can be in our stead. Because they know if the if the most high uh 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 see one or two of us that's righteous, he's gonna he's gonna deliver us, man. As it happened with Abraham and his uh, nephew Lot. He delivered Lot because hey, Abraham was praying for his nephew, man. Right. But hey, but here it is, uh, that mark of the beast chip is for him to have the whole world indoctrinated with his image, with his philosophy, and with, with uh, uh, basically uh, it's going to be uh, a way that you're uh, committing solely to him for eternity. Like how we used to do back in the days when we had slaves, you know, if they uh, wanted to stay with us forever, they'd get their ears pierced. They'd get both of their ears pierced, all right? Saying that they would stay under us forever, and that was a law. Uh, yeah, kind of. So that mark of the beast is uh is us turning away from the heavenly Father and them taking us as a whole. That's why they're trying to. That's why in that day they're gonna push that chip and then if you don't take it, they're gonna kill you, man. But uh, can okay, I read something for you? Yeah, kind of, bro. This is uh Jeremiah fifty verse seven. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries said, "We have been not." We have been not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. All right, he says, we have been not because they have sinned against the Lord, man. We don't have been, look, Lord, they going off. We put pork in the beef. We put pork in our lawful food. They going off. You ain't with them no more, but they can't see with a spiritual eye, man. Like the brother just said, man, they, they, take, they take crafty counsel. Well, the, uh, in, their, in, their, in their religion, in their belief, the Lord cannot be with them if they go from his way. So that's force they that's force them to go from his way. That's, that's what they do account. to us, man. And that's right. in the account. That's in the scriptures, man. Uh I don't know the exact book, but it said if their uh, if they sin against their power, then their power will not be for them, man. Right. And in other words, they'll be able to destroy us. That's why you had in the Maccabees when uh when uh, uh that king uh, uh what was the king that was trying to force everybody to eat the food? That's it. And the water. Antiochus, man, when he was trying to force everybody to eat that pork, he knew that was against our power. He knew that was against our custom. All right, so he, he did that purposely to try to uh, uh, get our power away from us, man. Right, and, right. Uh, and, and you know what? And he did that. You know when he when he brought us over here on slave cargo ships. You know when doing the uh, post Atlantic slave trade. That was the beginning of that to keep us away from uh, our power. Yeah. And he did that by beating our customs out of us. You know, because the scriptures say that uh, his name is uh, dreadful amongst the heathens. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if, if in this devil's mind, if, if we can, he, he was looking at like if we can keep you know, the name of the heavenly Father, you know, away from them in that, in that language. You know, hey, we we can we can stay in rulership longer, man. Yeah. You know, because that's his whole idea, man. Because this devil, he knows that his time is limited. You know, he know that his time is limited, man. He, he, he already know that uh, the Heavenly Father is not going to uh, 
let, let him keep on, you know, uh, doing what he's doing to his people, man. You know, he know that the Heavenly Father is going to eventually get your feet, you know, which the Heavenly Father is actually doing right now. The Heavenly Father is intervening. You know, he's doing it on a, on a gradual process. Yeah. He got he got the men of the Lord out here, the highway, the highway, you know what I'm saying, preaching, man, preaching the gospel, man, to wake up the uh, other Israelites, man. Yeah. You know, even though this devil think, thinking he's doing something about putting pork and swine and everything, you know, he got he got our people uh, uh, twerking, our, our women out here twerking and, and, and dressing naked, yeah. you know, and, and out here committing adultery and being wicked. But that's something that's called the elect. You know what I'm saying? This devil ain't gonna be able to stop that, man. That's right. He ain't gonna be able to stop the men of the Lord from waking up, man. He ain't gonna be able to stop the election, man. You know, the election is gonna they gonna get it, man. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna obtain this, man. You uh, know? What's that scripture? So it says it talks about uh I think the apostle just made a video recently titling the video of this scripture it says that uh, uh at least they find themselves fighting against God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Happily fighting against yeah. God. At least they find themselves happily fighting against God.